everyone. This is Petra, my dear colleague and the head of the Czech section of INSA. And this is Jana, my dearest colleague from the university and a member of the board of the Czech section of INSEA. We are now going to tell you a little bit about the conference. Petra will start and I will continue then after. Dear friends, let me welcome you to our conference. The idea to organize it came spontaneously in the spring of this year, when at least in the Czech Republic it seemed that the pandemic slowed down and was more or less managed, thanks to lockdown and the introduction of strict measures, including school closures, without unnecessary large casualties. The economic and other effects of the lockdown began to be discussed and the damage added up. The societal debate was on important topics such as the controversial question of whether it is good to paralyze the economy and bring an, a significant number of people into poverty in the name of health. The importance of culture and education and how to support these sectors. Perhaps the loudest debates, not only in our country, dealt with the issue of how the government has proceeded and whether it is able to conduct society responsibly through a period of crisis. We also thought about how easily personal freedoms were curtailed and how incredibly easy it was to close borders and return a free-spirited, fluid global public to the strict boundaries of national units. On the other hand, we were also warmed by the strong wave of solidarity between people and the countless volunteering activities of dedicated individuals and organizations, the atmosphere of mutual help and kindness towards the weaker. Before the summer holidays, it seemed to us that COVID, COVID was defeated and that the main question was whether and how we would be able to learn from the situation. Will we be able to capitalize on our experience and, for example, introduce online communication in areas where it has not been widely used so far? Can we modernize education to take advantage of the positive effects of digitization? Can we support teachers' digital literacy and use their motivation from this powerful experience? Can we support children from families who do not have sufficient facilities for distance learning? And finally, can we use digital tools meaningfully the pandemic was also an unprecedented experience on a personal level. Certainly, I'm not alone who today perceives differently their home, life securities, intergenerational family ties. Can we cope with the wave of depression? and the consequences of social isolation? Do we appreciate the value of family background and the quality of our interpersonal relationships? Coronavirus has exposed the vulnerability of individuals, but also the vulnerability of entire societies, in which today's demons, such as populism, nationalism, or the poison of misinformation, have found new breathing ground. Significantly, it turns out that populist leaders can only solve problems that they invent themselves, not real crises. Unfortunately, they fail in them and deepen the crisis by their actions. Divided societies where there is no trust cannot react rationally and suffer more in a crisis. However, we have seen that the lockdown, specifically the suspension of the normal operation of society and the economy, had not only negative but also positive effects. 
less traffic in cities, the reduction of environmental burden, or on a personal level, time spent at home with the family and living at home rather than just seeing home as a transfer station between work duties and entertainment. We have experienced that our consumerist and hedonistic lifestyles can be changed if we want to be able to shed ballast and focus on more important values. In this context, we saw our conference primarily as an opportunity to reflect on what he, we have experienced. We wanted to put all the key general questions into the context of our field. For a moment, it almost seemed that the topic might be slowly fading and becoming less and less relevant. But the opposite is true. At least in the Czech Republic, the pandemic is back and much stronger. We have alarming numbers of people infected, hospitals are running out of capacity, a state of emergency has been redeclared, cultural, educational and other activities are being curtailed again. Our conference, for which we have chosen a virtual form quite deliberately, is again very topical and important, not only because of its theme, but also because of it allows us to try an alternative and somewhat experimental way of professional communication. Unfortunately, today it is one of the few platforms where we can safely meet and share our experiences. It is certain that the spread of coronavirus has changed our lives and will continue to do so. We are faced with the challenge of dealing with this new situation and looking for ways to preserve the values of art education and to bring them to life in new conditions. In my opinion, the crisis must be taken as an opportunity. You may have seen your, for yourself many times during the pandemic that human creativity cannot be stopped. Our conference papers show not only that, but much more. In particular, it is the artistic and pedagogical creativity that comes to life in crisis and shows its strength. Personally, I am enthusiastic about the pedagogical approaches that our guests present here, as well as the theoretical studies and topical research analysis that inspire new ways of thinking. The papers presented at our conference show us the way we as teachers and our education have managed to communicate the importance of our education and to defend it where it has been sidelined. Let's not forget museums, galleries and artists representatives of cultural institutions and artists present here how they manage to stay in touch with the audience in these changed conditions. Gallery educators show how they presented cultural heritage and art in a situation where cultural life was completely paralyzed. The methods they have devised are amazing and you will be able to see it for yourself in, in some workshops. Our conference papers also show that the previously rather rejected distance education and virtual communication have taken place in art education and can be used without losing what is essential in our field. The conference contributions often show the touching sensitivity of some approaches which were not harmed by online sharing but instead made them visible to the rest of us. To put it simply, the crisis has forced us to film, take photos, work in social networks 
and other online platforms, in other words, to document and to share what we do with others. Now it is more than easy to present everything and show the public what is going on in art education. This is also the added value of our conference. Coronavirus has, has shown us and is still showing us that people do not have the world under control. The effects on people's lives and health or on the economy are devastating. Yet every crisis is also an opportunity to think, to transform internally and to invent new ways of living, communicating, creating, passing on the idea of art education. We have witnessed it a situation where our plans and established ways of life, seemingly stable and solid, fall apart quickly. We have known how fragile our civilization is. I believe that our conference will help us to learn from the, this situation and to prepare for crises that may come in the future. Let's not forget that deep experience can be an opportunity to go below the surface and find vitality and depth in uncertainty. Without depth, our community within INSEA can be the fulcrum on which we can rely in the future. In a crisis, it is extremely important to be in a community, to be anchored in a supportive network of related people, to have our own people around us, and to be able to share everything that is happening, uncertainties, fears, but also good new ideas, the joy from success or from discovering something new. The current pandemic is so devastating for us because it takes away or limits the possibility of this natural sharing. It forces us to isolate ourselves. It disrupts our contacts with people whether it is usual family and friendly meetings or participation in cultural life, at openings, concerts, theatre performances. Perhaps our virtual meeting, beyond all its limits, will become a much needed support network, an opportunity for people to people contact. I believe it will offer to all of us inspiration, strength, and the joy of communicating with each other, whether we are on the globe. It is my wish for all of us to share with each other all the good and bad that the current situation brings to us and to make new friendships. Dear guests, colleagues, Friends in Art and Art Education, welcome to our virtual international conference. It is our great pleasure to see you all here, ready to get in touch, to share, to talk about the area that is so dear to all of us, the area of art and education through art. The global situation that some of us are now experiencing for the second time this year has presented us with many challenges. Back in March, when the first state of emergency was declared, our lives changed almost at an instant. The new reality has affected every part of it, including, of course, also art education. However, it is the great character quality of Petra, my dear colleague and the head of the Czech section of INSA, to turn every challenge into an opportunity. And so she did with this one too. If we can't come together physically, let's do it virtually. And if we can do it virtually, why not do it internationally, she thought. And that is precisely the objective of this conference, to come together, <coughs> to connect with one another, no matter the geographical distance between us. Because really, thanks to new media, there is no distance. And let's share our thoughts and good practice 
of education through art in this unique yet global situation. Let's create art and enjoy art together because how often does it happen to us, the global community of art educators and artists, that we would occupy ourselves with the exact same theme at the exact same time. So, my message to all of us is to really take the opportunity of our international gathering here and let's connect, let's work together with the canvas presented to us by the global pandemic and let's paint on it a group image of what art and education through art can be in such an unprecedented time. Our conference is primarily not live streamed, which is great in that sense that we don't miss out anything. We can all see, hear or read everything and as, as many times as we like. But there is a section of the website that is titled General Discussions, where everybody who has registered, be they active or passive participants, can get in touch and talk. There is also a big section with workshops where some of them take place in the real time and are streamed. Foremost, I would like to invite you to three discussion rooms that will be live. One is hosted by the president of INSA, Glenn Coates, and the prime topic is the membership in INSA and the benefits of it. You are all very much invited to drop in any question you might have about INSA, its aims, what it does, how it operates, how you can contribute, and how to join the worldwide community of education through art. The second discussion room is hosted by the USSEA Board of Directors, who invite everyone to join art education scholars from the United States Society for Education Through Art, who will share their unique and shared challenges resulting from teaching and researching practices in the area of COVID-19. In the third room hosted by members of the INSA European Regional Council, you are all invited to share and explore possibilities for post-pandemic art teaching with the hosts who will offer insights from five different European countries' perspectives. Please see the section with conference program for more details regarding the date and time of the discussion rooms. To conclude, I would like to express our deep gratitude to all of you for taking the time and participating in this conference. Our sincere thanks go to the keynote speakers who selflessly agreed to share their great experience and expertise with us. And we would also like to thank our partners who helped us along the way to organize this conference, namely our alma mater and the seat of the Czech section of INSA, Palacki University Olomouc, here in the Czech Republic. Our colleagues from the Olomouc Museum of Art, our colleagues from United States Society for Education Through Art, from the Canterbury Christchurch University in UK, and to our colleagues from INSA who were so generous as to endorse our event. Our thanks also go to the scientific and organizing committees for volunteering to help us with the conference. We would like to extend our thanks to all the volunteers, especially to our PhD students who helped us create the visual styles of the conference and the promo videos. Last but not least, our special thanks go to the artists who offered to perform for us at the opening of our conference. So now make yourself comfortable in your homes, offices or anywhere else you are right now. And enjoy the conference which is now officially opened. Cheers to all of us.